Guitar practice session 11624. These are relatively sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me verbalize the things I'm trying to learn to get them in my mind better, possibly providing information to others learning similar things, possibly also providing for feedback. If anybody sees a better way to do the things that I'm doing here, noting that presenting information I think is highly useful because it helps us to articulate things in ways we otherwise would not because we don't really care about our own selves and what we think in of, of ourselves. But if we have to present it to someone else or at least pretend someone else is listening, we have to format the thing where the other person actually understands it, which is makes us learn it better, I feel like. So if you want to make your own practice sessions, you can use these resources. We'll try to provide you with a worksheet, for example. Don't worry about plagiarism. You can adjust them as you need. Uh, however, they will be orientated from the perspective of us playing from behind the guitar as if we implanted the strings on the guitar so that we have the low or heavy string on top, top to bottom, left to right from the perspective of us behind the guitar playing it. I'm going to rotate my guitar around so it looks like I'm left-handed. So what I'm doing lines up to our worksheet, which lines up to what you're doing from behind your guitar so we can focus in on the relative position and not rotating the guitar around in our mind. So I start off with the recap that we're looking at the minor scale here. So the minor scale could also be called mode number six, the Aeolian mode. We're looking at the ninth again, this time looking at the top bottom two strings, which are possibly the ones that I think myself and many people are least familiar with when you're kind of creating intervals because that means that down here, you're reaching up to create the interval. So when I look at a chord construction, note that usually I'm thinking about a chord, we build chords by picking the note that is of interest on the top two strings oftentimes, and then build from that a lean forward type chord or a bar chord. But so that means that we often, unless in certain types of musics, when you're playing certain types of rules in music, say like a filler type of role, then you might be more familiar with these bottom two strings because you're trying to find a gap to play something rather than playing these bass notes up top. So you might know these two strings down here quite well. But for most people, I think when they create a chord, they create it from top to bottom. So therefore, uh, it's probably gonna help us behoove us, I like, to, I like that word, it's gonna behoove us <laughs> to, to like build chords from these root notes at the bottom it also can be more difficult because we have this fault line right here. So this is where the different relationship comes into play so that we want to be able to understand how that fault line is going to mess up the chord shapes when we cross over it and when it's going to come into play. So I think it's really nice then for us to move on to these bottom strings, which is a little bit more difficult for me, you know, as well as we kind of work through it. So that's what I'm learning out here with the ninth. Ninth is equivalent to the... Uh, to the second, a major second, even though we're in the minor mode. So we start off, as always, by reiterating what we're trying to do in the big picture and looking at the minor scale, the major and minor scales, we think of them almost as their own thing, not even like related modes, they're their own thing. But I want to put them in the perspective of modal relationships so that I can then think about how I can maneuver between a major and minor related modes in my mind as smoothly as as possible. So we talk about that and then I go down here and we talk about the, the minor mode. And as we go through the discussion of the minor mode, I, I get into the idea a little bit more this time than in prior days about the idea of, I think what people naturally do if they were to play like in a bluesy situation versus if you're playing modally. So I talk a little bit more about that in just as an overview, I think the difference is like when you're when you're thinking like in a blues standpoint or something like that, you are typically thinking more in shapes, possibly in like arpeggiation and intervals. You're saying this shape is here when I play in the A. So when I move to the four, then I'm going to play the D and play the same interval relationship, the same relative positions. Uh, and so that and so that so th in that case, you're not really thinking about the the scale shape. I'm not looking at one through five scale shapes on the fretboard, right? 
or you're you are thinking about the shape on the fretboard. I'm in position one, two, three, four, or five. Therefore, when I move from the first chord to the third chord, I have to play something that's not symmetrical or the same in nature, but something that fits into the shape that I know I am playing. So those will, those two things will force you to go. If I'm going from like to from the one to the to the five, they'll force you to either switch from Aeolian to Aeolian, right? Minor to minor, or they're going to force you to go from minor to Phrygian, which is still a minor chord, but has one note different. So I talk about that a little bit more. And then we go into our, our a little bit more on the overarching project. And then we jump back on over here and work through these bottom two strings. I tell a joke in the middle, which isn't about the American political election this time because it's finally over, but it's still kind of political. So if you want to, it's not really political like in politics, but it's kind of like with this woke stuff. <laughs> so if you don't want to do that, if you don't want that, you could skip it if that's going to bother you, if that's going to be bothersome. And then at the end, I do another uh, kind of jamming around. I pick a chord. Uh, these are all the combinations of three notes if you start at one and I pick the one, five, six, and then I try to jam around in the key of A minor with a one, five, six discussing how I know whether I play a minor chord or a major chord with the five and the six and then discussing again with the five and the six, should I play something that's symmetrical to the Aeolian, which I can do with the five, but not the six because that's a major and or do I want to switch to Phrygian when I go to the five and what does it mean if I switch to Phrygian? So then I jam around in that and then I just jam around in the key of A minor for a little while and I think that's basically it. Today we're continuing on with the minor scale otherwise known as mode number six, the Aeolian mode focusing in on the ninth interval again but this time looking at the strings on the bottom of the guitar, the ones closest to the floor because we did the strings above them in prior presentations. So same general objective, we would like to be able to put our finger on any note on the guitar, thinking of it as the root and be able to find every ninth from that uh, position. And beyond that, be thinking of the one, three, five, particularly in the minor scale in this case. And then could we add a nine to it? Now, if we can't get the one, three, and five to add the nine, we'll try to drop the five. And if I can't do that, we'll try to drop the third to see if I can get the one, five, nine. We could also think about, you wanna have in your mind possibly the seven, which we might include from time to time. But sometimes when someone says that we have a ninth, then they might you might be implying that basically you have the one, three, five, seven, and nine, right? But obviously on a guitar, Oftentimes you can't get all of those notes. So oftentimes I think of it as just basically trying to get the bass notes of the one, three, five, and then the nine, and then seeing if you want to, if you can and or want to be emphasizing the added flavor of like a seventh. Noting, of course, when we start to talk about something greater than like four notes, anything greater than three notes, three notes in and of itself has a lot of different ways that we can finger it. When you get to, to four notes and then to like possibly five notes, clearly there's a lot of different ways you can finger it. Not only that, but if you look at it from a different perspective, then you might call that same chord something else, right? And that's where things get kind of really messy. We're looking at things from the perspective here of having the root and then the ninth compared to that root. And once we start dropping a third or dropping a fifth, then you might start to say, hey, look, that looks like another another chord, right? Which you might want to keep in your mind to see that and be able to see the relationships between the, the different shapes and then be able to look at them from the perspective of whatever you're looking at it from. And so we'll practice basically that on the bottom two strings. Our strategy, of course, being to pick one string on every uh, one position on every note on the guitar somewhere in the middle and then look at the relative positions related to that string of which there should only be six because there's six strings. And if we do that on every string, then we should be able to maneuver those shapes and look at those same relative positions on any other string on the guitar, given the symmetry of the guitar. 
Before we do that, let's give a quick recap of our overall objective to have that in mind, which will give us hopefully some insight to why this is useful, how is this going to be helping us, and, uh, and when does it apply and when does it not apply. So our goal is to be able to play basically in all the different modes and to be able to see the different modes by different shapes and be able to shift those different shapes similarly to copying and pasting on an Excel worksheet, looking at all the relative positions as we move them around. How best to do that? Well, typically we're going to use the major scale as our point of reference. We want to learn it first, even though the major scale and the minor scale, the two scales that we think of most in Western music, are no more really than two of the modes. They're just two perspectives that we're looking from. So we want to see them from a modal perspective because that will help us to basically see how they're related to all the other modes, which will help with our chord construction as well as shifting between modes. So, but we want to use the major scale often as our point of reference. That's just traditional in Western music and functional because much of Western music is based on the major scale more than any other scale. So we have the one through seven, seven notes, relative positions out of 12. The notes commonly used when you're just learning are the notes in the key of C. Those aren't really important, but the key of C gives you a nice check figure to say, I know everything is proper here because there's no sharps and flats. But in theory, I can move this shape up where there will be sharps and flats in our progressions to other, other uh, scales. So we want to learn the relative positions to be able to do that. So we're looking at relative positions. And then we can think of how can I build a chord on each of those relative positions? That's quite practical for song creation. First, we often memorize that the one, three, five are major, the two, three, and six are, are minor chords. And that just results from us starting from each of the notes in the progression and picking every other note, which results in a third either playing a major third or a minor third, defining the chord, also defining the related mode, whether it be a major mode or a minor mode. So that is useful. But when I go to another mode, like even a minor mode, the minor mode being the Aeolian mode, so we're working in the minor mode now or the minor scale, which is just basically a mode, we can still think of it as, in essence, the sixth mode of the major scale. I have a problem here, though, because I can't, I can't just be able to say that the same relative positions are going to build a major and minor chord. The one, four, five here are not going to be major because I'm in a minor, I'm in a minor chord now. So there's a couple ways that we can then transfer the knowledge that we have from the major to the relative positions of the minor. One is a simple math type of situation where I could say, hey, look, this. Uh, minor right here, the minor mode is the sixth of the major. I'm going to use a an absolute mode numbering system and just call the modes by their relative position to the major scale. So I'm going to call it mode number six. If it's mode number six, how many steps away is it from the first mode? It's one, two, three, four, five steps away or whatever mode I'm on, six minus one. So if I go down here and say, okay, if I'm on the the Aeolian mode, it's the sixth mode. What if I want to find the fourth of the Aeolian mode? Well, I could say, well, the sixth mode minus one is five. So it's five steps away from the related major plus four more steps because I'm looking for the fourth starting at this point. So four plus five, five, six, seven, eight, nine is nine. There's only seven modes because there's only seven notes in a scale. Nine minus seven is two. So that means this fourth of the minor scale is the second of the relative major scale. And I know that the two, three, and six are minor chords. I also know that the two, if I use an absolute numbering system for the modes, is the Dorian mode. So that tells me that this is going to be a minor. Now, I can also kind of memorize that with the minors, and that's useful to do as well. We have a nice convention for doing that because the one, four, five of the major are major chords and the one four five if i start on the minor mode six aeolian they're minor chords so the one four five are minor that's nice because i think of those as the bluesy progressions in the majors and the minor great progressions to practice with 
because you get to see all of the same types of chords majors together so you can see the relations as you move through the different shapes how they're similar and then the minors you can move through the shapes and see how they're similar but then i don't have the same convention of the two five and six being the other ones in this case major because the two i have to memorize is the locrian and that's the weird one that you possibly avoid when doing chord creation because it's going to lead into like the ionian and that's not even our root our root is the aeolian and then we so it's really the other ones are going to be then uh, we have the one four five and then we have on, on the majors are going to be let me get these out of here right now these shouldn't be here that's confusing me and then we have the three six seven are going to be the majors so one four five are the minors three six seven are uh the majors so that's useful and i can memorize if i make a major chord or a minor chord but that doesn't really help me just to memorize that to know which 7, 9, 11, and 13 I can add because that doesn't give me enough information to add those. Remembering that when I do add these, I could try to memorize the Aeolian uh, scale, which I'm going to do here. And then when I switch to like the 4 or the 5, which are the two other minors, I can shift everything up as though I'm playing not D Dorian, but D minor, not E Phrygian, but E minor, in which case the same intervals will be, will be there, but I won't be playing in the same shape that way, right? I'll have to shift the shapes in my mind and start saying now, and which is often people play when you think about like arpeggiating, that's easy to do because you're like, like if I do a shape like this up here, and that's a minor, I know I'm thinking of myself in the minor. And then I go down here, and this is a D. I could say, well, I'm just gonna do the same shape. So I'm gonna go, and see how that sounds symmetrical? It sounds. So, but, so, and that makes sense. So it, and I think that's kind of how the blues kind of worked, right? Because people were learning, they're like, well, that sounds cool like this. And I know that this note is the same. So I'll just do the same shape, which sounds cool, right? And so that, because it's all symmetrical. So, so I'm not really worried so much about like, is it in the same pattern, the same pattern on the fretboard? I'm more thinking, I'm looking at the relative positions and saying, I'm just going to play the same relative positions when I go to the four and then the five, which means that I might not simply be in the same key. I'm really kind of switching from Aeolian to the four, but Aeolian to the five, but Aeolian. But if you want to stay in the same key, you got to, you got to think, okay, I can't play exactly the same shape because there's going to be a one interval difference possibly and this scale, Dorian scale, even though the one three the one three five is the same, there's gonna be one different interval than the Aeolian. So that's how so 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 that's gonna be the difference. Well, how do I know that? Well I can learn I can learn all of the ones for Aeolian up top, the minor scale, and then tip pick the two that are different to it, Dorian and Phrygian, and then figure out the one interval that's different. So if I go to the one and then I go to the four. If I want to play Dorian, instead of converting myself to the one of the D, right? And then, then I need to know, I need, it's the same shape. So in that case, like one way I can do it is I just know, well, I know like my five shape patterns. I know that I can't, if I try to do the same thing, I know that I can't do this. I can't do that because it's not in my shape. I can look at my shape and say, that doesn't fit. What does fit? Well, I can do that. So that's one way that you can kind of figure that out, right? But that, and the other way is to look at it in kind of intervals, right? So that's usually, I think, what mo how most people kind of approach it. Like if, you, if you're just noodling around on the guitar, you're like, oh, I'm gonna play the one, an A play some intervals around it like arpeggiated and then I'm going to do the same for the D and I'm not really thinking about the shape I'm in in terms of the five shapes I'm just thinking I play the same pattern 
or you're thinking, I'm in this shape, right? I'm in this shape, so I'm gonna play the notes available to me in the shape, which are like this, and this shape. But if I try to play that similar thing down here, I can't do it because it's not in the same shape, but I could do something close. Like. Right, so that, those are the two ways I think most people just practically kind of approach it. But we'd, it'd be nice if we could decide which way we want to approach it, right? And then, and, that, and, that, and then be able to switch our mind from the two methods so that we actually have more opportunities to do like... And then, and, and then switch. And, and do something that, oh, the, the ear's going to be tweaked a little bit because now I'm not playing D Aeolian. I'm switching to D Dorian, right? So those are the kind of things. How could we do that? Well, we learn all of the intervals on the major, and then we, and then we look at the one interval that's different for the minors. Now, we're on the ninth now, remembering that the ninth is there's only seven there's only seven notes in a scale. The way we build a chord is we just pick whatever note we're on, think of the scale as a circle, and we just pick every other note. So we pick the one, three, five is here. When we, when we built off of, off of the B, we just skipped every other note. We took the B to the D to the E, B, D, E. And that's what builds, you know, in this case, the Locrian and so on. So, so, so there's only seven notes though. What happened with the nine? Well, instead of going around the circle and going back, so we took every other note, one, three, five, seven, instead of going back to the two, which is what would happen if you think about it in a circle, we called that two a nine, which would make sense if you're thinking in octaves, because now we're another octave up. But on the guitar, we're typically, I'm just going to call it the two. So for all intents and purposes, I'm going to say that the nine is equivalent to the two. Right, and then the 11 is equivalent to the 4, and the 13 is equivalent to the 6. All right, so given that, if we're learning the 9, that's the one funny interval on the major scale because normally the, ma the minor scale is the major scale, but then we keep the perfects and we flat the majors. So, except for the second. So, we have a perfect first, same as the major scale. On the second, we have a two note away major second. That's weird because you'd think we would flat it, but we don't. On the third, we've got a three note away minor third instead of a four note away major third on the major. On the fourth, we've got a five note away perfect fifth. That's the same. On the fifth, we have a seven note away perfect fifth. That's the same. On the sixth, we have an eight note away minor sixth instead of a nine note away major six. And on the seven, we have a 10 note away minor seven instead of an 11 note away major seven. So we're on the two which is equivalent from chord constructions to the nine, which actually has a major second, which means that this interval, although we're looking at it from the perspective of a minor, is the same as all the majors. So in other words, it's the same that interval that we looked at for the Ionian, the major scale, the Mixolydian, and the Lydian, all the three major chords. So, so when you look at this interval, it's good not only for the minor scale here, but for all of the majors. And it's good for the one and the four, but it's not good for the five, meaning the Phrygian has the flat second. So you think of the Phrygian as the exception to the rule. So we're looking at the nine, which is equivalent to the two, which is going to be the same for all the minors and even all the majors. The exception to the rule, the only exception to the rule is the Phrygian, which if you're in a minor scale is the five of the minor scale or equivalent to mode number three or the third of the related major scale, which is the Phrygian mode. All right. So keeping that in mind, we're going back, we're going back on over and let's do this. So I'm going to go, we're going to, I think we're down here like on the E. So we'll go down to the bottom here. Uh, 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 E, F, there, right here we go. All right, let's see right here. So now I'm just going to choose in the middle of the guitar that E. Let's look at our relationships. I'm going to go above it first. So now look at, it's, it's when we're down here, it's useful to look at the, where we are with the fault line. The fault line is above it. So that means the relationships from here below 
will be the same as most of the relationships up above. But when I when I go above it, I'm going to have a different relationship than like when I was on the C and I went above it. I'm going to have a different relationship between this string and above it because this whole bottom bit has been shifted up because of the plate tectonics that happened. There was a big earthquake and the fault line, the San Andreas pushed this whole plate, this tectonic plate was pushed to the right. So that's going to mess up all of our shapes. So we have to keep that in mind. All right. So if I go above it, I'm looking for the ninth, which is a major ninth, which is a two note away major ninth, or you can think of it as a two note away uh, major second. And we need the inverse of it because I'm going above it. So there's going to be a distance of the inverse between these two, which is 12 minus two, which is 10. So I'm looking for a 10 note away, uh, which would be a minor seven. And I see it up here. So let's count that out then. I think it goes like, so it would be a negative five going this way. And note, oftentimes I see this more easily when I'm going from top to bottom. So when I cross the fault line from going top to bottom, I'm pretty good at now saying, well, if I'm here, it's going to be five notes away going diagonal this way. I'm less sure when I go from bottom to top. So I need to work on the idea. Of course, if it's five notes away going this way between these two, then which way do I go here? I don't go up to here. It would be the same five note distance between these two. So I'm going to say this is going to be negative five and then going to the right will bring it back down. So negative five, four, three, two, one, zero. So this brings me back to zero. But because I'm counting down, that's equivalent to being 12. It's zero or 12. And then I'm going to say 12, uh, uh, 11, and then 10. So that gives me a, to a 10 note away. It's kind of a wonky one uh, to count up a little bit. But we're going to say that goes from here back down. Oh, wait, I'm, now I'm going the wrong way here up to 11. So can't really reach it quite a stretch uh, so possibly not the most practical thing I won't even play it but I see it out there all right let's do the next one so let's go to this one so now once again the 10 would be going this way I'm looking for the ninth which is a two note away major nine which is equivalent to a two note away major second the inverse is 12 minus 2 which is 10 so there's going to be a 10 note distance between these two notes. So this would be five to go this way and then 10 because there's no kink in the fault line going to the one above it. So if I look at this shape, then I'm on this E and then this uh, is an F sharp. Is that right? Yeah. So normally I would, this is a 10 note away top to bottom, 10 note away, which would be a minor seven. Normally the minor seven, if, if that was my root note, this would be back here. But because there's a fault line between these, between these two, it's been shifted up uh, this way, which looks more like it's a ninth, or, you know, you know uh, but that's the way it is. So that means that the inverse of this is a two note away. The inverse is a two note away major second, which I can also call a two note away major nine. Okay, so that's going to be that one. Can I add anything to it with our uh, three and a five? So I've got a three and a five next to it. So I've got a uh, five right here. So then I can go boom. So we have that shape. All right, so that is nice. I have a uh, three down here. Could I possibly play that at the same time? So notice that this three is the same n normal distance of a minor third because there's no fault line between these two. So I have the same distance to get to the minor third here. And then I want to reach up to the F sharp. So that would be how, how best to do that. Uh, let me work with my finger in here. I have this going back here, and then I also want to reach up to this F sharp. So maybe like that. And then I might be able to bar this off. The, well, the easiest way, hold on a second here. Okay, I got it now. I don't know why that was difficult. 
So I've got, this is the, uh, the nine, five, one, and then third. Interesting. Okay, so I've got this. What else do I got here? I've got a fifth out here. This is the normal distance for my power chord fifth. That makes sense. So if I go from here and I'm trying to pick up that F sharp again and then just my fifth right there. And then I muted this one. Now I don't have to mute it, I could then pick up, I can bar that with my pointer and pick up another fifth. That's kind of nice. There's no real third I can put in there too easily. And I've got this finger hanging here. So I, but there's nothing I can really do with it. So that's cool. Okay. So that's that one. And this, I have a third here, not too helpful. I have a third, I have a fifth up top. So I could go boom, boom, and then fifth up on the nine, up on the seven. That's five, six, seven. That's somewhat awkward. It's doable. <laughs> but all right, let's move on to the next one. So if I go up here, again, I'm looking for an, an interval of a major ninth, which uh, is going to be a two note away major ninth, which is equivalent to a two note away major second for our purposes, because I'm above the root, I'm looking for the inverse, which is 12 minus two or 10. I can count that out by saying going here, negative five, I'll call it, and then 10, and then 15. I'm going to bring this back down to 0, 15, or back down. 15 minus 12 is, well, no, it's 15 here, and then 14, uh, 14, <laughs> 13, 12, 11, 10. So there we have it. 10, so it's 10 notes away. So I'm going to go from here to, to like the 9 right there, okay. So top to bottom would be a 10 note away minor seven, bottom to top, therefore two note away major second or two note away major nine. Okay, so then I have right below that, I could try to bar that fifth. That's pretty tough to do with my pinky. And then I'm, I'm naturally gonna mute the string under it when I do that. And then I, so that's kind of doable, but it's pretty difficult to try to grab that fifth with that stretch. It's tough on the pinky. Uh, we have a, we could try to bar this off. So if I bar that off, I'm going to end up picking up the 13 as I do that. So I'll pick up the 13, that C. Or maybe I should do it here. I'll be picking up that C to try to get both of these. That 13 gives a lot of dissonance. So 9, 3, 13, 1. I could pick up the A at the bottom, it would be 11, 2. So that's kind of doable. Uh, okay, I have a, another five down here, which is basically reachable. So 
So, so I could, could still get that 13. And I, now I took the thing off of the, the root. I still need the root, but you still need the root, Bob. So I'm still going to try to bar that off. All right. Man, that's tough on the hand. That's a reachy one. All right, let's go to the one above that. So one, once again, I'm looking for the 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 major ninth, uh, which is a two note away major ninth, which is equivalent to a two note away uh, major second. The inverse, because I'm going above it, is going to be 12 minus two or 10. So if I count that out, five, 10, 15. Let's bring it down. 15 minus 12, because there's only 12 notes, is five minus two, which is three, and then three plus five, five, six, seven, eight. And then nine, ten. So here we go, ten note away from here back to the two. Now this one becomes well. That's that's that. Okay. So what can I grab there? I have here. We have our our bar shape. If I could grab that. I don't really need this E, but I can bar this off. And I don't need that A. If I get it, it's fine. Because that'll be my 11. And then there, so. I could bar this whole thing off. So it's kind of interesting. Is there anything else I can do with that? I have a fifth right here. So instead of this fifth, I grab that fifth. So now I'm thinking of that as the root, which is kind of weird. And then I have a fifth right here. The fifth, by the way, usually is right above it, but because of the fault line, it's back here, right? So got shifted. <laughs> I could still bar this if I could, but now add another fifth. So if I take the fifth off and try to reveal that A, adding the fifth. Ah, whew. All right, let's go to the same string. So now if I go onto the same string, I'm looking for a two note away major ninth otherwise known as a two note away major second, which is just going to be two notes away now. So if it's on the same string, two notes away. Same distance as on the major. If I go below it, then I can arpeggiate it. It would be same position as though I was on position one at the top, right? Which you could see kind of up here or maybe here. Like if this was the E at the top, then I would have what I would call position one would just be our normal position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing down here, where if I'm down here, there's no kink between these two strings. So it's still, I can think of it as though I'm in position one now, right? Because I'm in the minor key, position one. One, two, three, four, five, six. No more strings, but that repeats up here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Because the same E is on top. So, so that means I have the same relationships that I had when I was up here in relation to the A, if I was on the A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So then we're gonna say, that means that I have, if I think of that, I can think of that as the two or the nine, the three and the five. So I can arpeggiate one, two, three, five, one, two, three, five, or one, three, five, nine, one, three, five, nine, Three, five, nine. And I also have a third back here, so I could look at it this way. This relationship between that third is the same as normal because there's no kink between the tuning between these two. So it'd be the, the one, the one, three, the one, three, and you could say nine, nine, one, three, nine, one, three, nine, or two, one, three, nine, or one, three. One three five nine. One three five nine. One three five nine. 
So there's that. All right. And let's go to the string below it now, which is going to be this one. All right. So now I'm looking for a distance of a two note away major nine or two note away major second, which is five below it now, four, three, two. So that's our normal pinky to pointer whole step difference. Pinky to pointer, four, four frets back. Two note away major second or two note away major nine and what can I do uh, with that well there's a I have a fifth right here so the fifth is in a different position now because normally the fifth would be right above it that's where the kink in the tuning is so rather than the fifth being here because this whole plate shifted up the th and the fifth got left back here it's back here right so I've got, okay, this would be the five, one, nine. Five, one, nine, five, one, nine, five, one, nine, five, one, nine. Cool. Then I have a third up here, which is hard to grab at the same time. So I just, well, I have a third right there. So I could go this distance and then that's interesting okay no, what's my normal position here with this E? If it was an E minor, it would be this. A D-shaped E, which would be here, here, and here. That's like my normal E position. And the third is a three note away minor third. So if I shift that third back, that's one way, of course, to think of it. So now wherever my third is, I can shift it back. So if I'm like... If you play this with your pinky, it might be easier. good to point out or to realize all right so then if I I have another five up top so I could be like here's that on the two that's way up there there's a two. yeah that's not gonna uh, well maybe so I can bar this whole thing off I can mute those two or I can play them if I mute them I get the one mute mute I'm sorry I get the five mute mute one and then the nine if I try to bar this I get the five one a is the eleven one nine interesting okay and then I have a G back here that's quite stretchy looking so you've got here and then if that was a, that'd be a tough strip. All right, let's leave it at that. Let's go to the one on the bottom, which will be a G next time. But I'll tell a joke this time. It's not going to be really political, but it's still kind of like, I guess, I guess it's kind of political. I don't know. But it's not on the election specifically. So that's over. That was crazy over here. Uh, so 
the, even the Democrats didn't didn't challenge it. I can't believe it. Even that's like, <laughs> oh man. Anyways, I don't know much about it, but I'll look at it more later. So this is just a normal uh, this joke here. So here we go. If it still might be offending some people, so if you don't want to skip the joke, you could skip the joke here. But here we go. Here's some coffee. Daily joke. You know, with the whole DEI thing in Hollywood, and I think Hollywood is possibly the craziest in the country with this whole DEI thing these days. The only way for like a white dude to actually get a job seems to be claiming they're like homosexual or something. And it's like, honestly, like half of Hollywood is like that old Boozum Buddies TV show, you know, where, where you got the, 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 to get a cheaper apartment in a women's oldly complex, the two guys act like a woman. But except in Hollywood, you got the added twist that, that you need to proudly proclaim that you're a man dressing like a woman. Whereas, you know, on the TV show, they were, they were dressing like a woman and not proclaiming it because that's the way they got the cheaper rent. But th now you, so it's kind of a twist. It's crazy. You know, like a job interview seems to be go like something like this. It's like, are you a homosexual or could you possibly check any other of these boxes we have listed here? And it's like, well, you know, although I'm not, I'm not at all attracted to men. I, I do believe, you know, at, at one time the term gay meant happy. And I do consider myself like to be a happy person in general. Plus I do like rainbows and color. Color in general is good. I like colors. Although I don't really associate them with gayness, or at least I didn't. Honestly, now I, now I must admit that I that I feel some unease even purchasing a bag of Skittles, and and I and I do tend to to wear just gray these days. I have just gray on so as not to to be fronting with the local gay gangs, you know. Seriously, I I feel like I'm living back in the hood, man. Except that the gay gangs, they they don't let you wear any colors. It's like what the heck's going on here? You can't claim. You can't claim all the colors. You maybe like one, like one or two per gang. That's all you get. You know, you can't just all colors. What is it? What? And, and, and my war, my, my wardrobe turned into looking like the Facebook CEO, Mark Zuckerberg's old, old wardrobe with the same gray, the same gray t-shirt every day. You know, man, I, I really wish. I really wish the Skittles company would come up, come out with an all gray colored bag of Skittles so I could, that would be nice. But anyways, oh, and I do prefer having sex in my home rather than like in public, like at a park under a tree or something. So I guess I'm like a home oriented sexual person, if that helps. Do, does that make, does it matter if I'm like, I'm a home oriented sexual person. Does that check off the right boxes? And the D the DEI Hollywood people are like, no, not only, not only does that not count, but you have just revealed that you're a public park sexophobe, meaning you have a, you have a phobia against public park sex. Ne next, you'll be telling us you disapprove of drag queen sex hours for kindergartners for crying out loud. That's actually a check in our blacklist box section, not like the good, which is our, which is, you know, in favor of social justice, we've renamed the black box to the white list, to the white list box section. I know it's confusing, but the point is, those are the bad boxes, man. You're in one of the white listed bad boxes. Not, not only will you not be getting a job here in Hollywood, we're, 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 we're proceeding to dox your house. We suggest you buy a full length mirror. Why? Because you need to watch yourself, man. That's right. That's right. You need to watch yourself. Be gone, you bigot. That's how interviews go in Hollywood. At least that's what I'm told. I don't know anymore. I moved. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, that's all I got for the joke. It was horrible. Whatever, dude. We're going to the next one. Let's go to uh, the G. No, I want to go to the A at the bottom. A, A. Let's put that at the bottom here. 
Okay. All right, so we're on the A. We want to go above the A. So now, if we look at the relationship here, if I'm on the bottom string, there's no fault line between this note and this note. So I'm going to have the same related differences as if I was on the C or any of the above strings to the things above it, or at least to the one string right above it. But when I go two strings up, that's where the fault line is. So when I go up to this string, I'm going to have a different relative position than if I was on like, if I was on like this C and I went two strings up. All right, I'm going to try to keep that in my mind. <laughs> I'm going to try to visualize that as I go. All right, so let's do this. So we're looking for a two note away major ninth, which is equivalent to a two note away major second. I'm going above it. Therefore, I need to find the inverse to look at the distance between these two notes. So that's going to be 12 minus two, which is 10. So if I go above it, uh, there's one back here. If I count that out, I'm going to go, this is five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's the one that's way out there. So it's kind of doable to reach, but it's possibly too far. Then I'm going to go to the next one up because that one's not too useful. This one does cross the fault line. And therefore the relationship between these two will be similar to the relationship I had here that was that was kind of two strings up because it also had both of those notes on the other side of the fault line but if i went from c up the relationship will be different because there's no fault line between these two strings so i'm going to say all right if i if i count this up it would be five to get up to here and then 10 going this way because that's where the san andreas is at that's where the fault line's at you're on the other side of the other side of the tracks man other side of the fault line all right, so we're going to go from here to here. Uh, all right. So, so if I go from top to bottom, that would be a 10 note away major 7 or minor 7. Therefore, from bottom to top is a 2 note away minor 2nd or 2 note away, uh, I'm sorry, 2 note away major 2nd or 2 note away major 9. So there we have it. Boom. Okay, that looks good. And then what else do I have? I have this uh, fifth right above it. Now note the fifth this time is right above it. The fifth, when I was on this E, the fifth was shifted backwards. It would have been over here. But now there's, because the fault line is, is not between these two strings, when I add the fifth down here, it's right there, right? So I could go boom, boom, boom. So now I've got the the nine, the five, one. All right, that's interesting. And then I have a third that's way out here. And, and so that would be a third is a three note uh, away. Inverse would be 12 minus three or uh, nine. So that'd be five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm like, all right, does that make sense from here to like the C is way back there? And then I want the B. It's doable, quite reachy. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. So, okay. And then I've got a I did that one. What about above here? It's way out here. Or I've got a five up top again. So I've got boom, boom. And then on the seven, I, uh, okay. And then I could try to mute the string in between. That's fine. All right, let's move on. Moving on. Okay, so let's go to this one. Next string up. Once again, I'm looking for the uh, two note away major nine, or two, which is equivalent to two note away major second. I'm above it, so I'm looking for the inverse distance, which will be 12 minus two, which is 10. So five up here, and then 10, because I'm going to the fault line, 15, and then this way goes down, 14, 
uh, 13, 11, 12, 10. Muy bien. All right, so we're gonna go here to on the nine. Boom, that's a, that's a B. Yeah, okay. All right, is there anything else I can grab? I have a five right above it and the C, so I could try to grab all these three and then reach up that way. So that would be a nine, three, five, one. So if I was playing just this, now notice if I just played these three, I would think of that as an A minor. Uh, that is an A minor. Add the nine. So if I was so so if I was noodling around in this, I'd be like, okay, A minor is this way. A minor is like this, right? I could go A minor. I could play that same shape by doing this, and then I could play the bottom part of the shape like this, and then I could reach out here and be like, oh, let me throw a nine in there. As I'm doing that, I could grab the B, on, I could throw another nine on top of it. I'm grabbing the B up top, or I can grab the five, which helps to not, uh, if I'm strumming like crazy, to mute some strings above it. So that's kind of cool. I should be able to. we got what do we go I could just I did that this back here probably not doable let's go to the next one let's go to, to this one so once again I'm looking for the two note away major nine which is equivalent to two note away major second and if I go inverse I'm looking for the inverse because I'm going above it 10 12 minus 2 is 10 so 5 10 15, let's bring it down, 15 minus 12, because there's only 12 notes, it's 5 minus 2, which is 3, plus 5, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 9, 10, 10 notes away. Okay, so I go from this A back to here, all right, all right, interesting, and then I have this situation again where I can bar this off and try to bar that off. So that's kind of interesting because if I went over here, the A shape would obviously that be my normal A minor shape which then I could shift to this is my, I can shift to this A minor shape. And I can go from there back and let go of the third to reveal the B, which is just the bar. I do that instead of grabbing this A right here I could grab the high A just putting that on the top Uh, let me 
anything else I have, I ha I could grab the third over here. So here's my A minor shape again. Those three, the A on the bottom. What if I grab the one, three, and then this B? I could try to get the five underneath. Or I can try to bar both of them. That's interesting. So now I can say, well, why don't I try to bar this and this? Well, I guess I can only bar these two if I did that effectively. try to bar these three and then just these two if I don't get that bottom A ah interesting all right let's move on to the next one, if I can, if I may. We'll say this one's up here. So once again, I've got, I'm looking for a 10 note distance because I'm looking for a two note away major nine, inverse is 10, so five, 10. So this would be five, 10, 15, bringing it down, 15 minus 12 is five minus two, which is three plus five, uh, five, six, seven, eight, and then Eight plus five, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 minus one is 12, 11, 10. Makes perfect sense. So I have this from here to here. Oh, okay. So then I still have my A shape that I can grab this way, like this. And then grab that B up top. That's totally doable. So what's really happening here is I have my A shape like this, bar shape, which I could play like this, but I'm focusing on the bottom of it. And then I'm reaching up and grabbing the top bit, but not the A, but instead the B. So now I'm I'm putting that on top and it would be cool if I could bar, if I can, well, I'll get like these two and then I'll mute this string. That's totally doable. So it's funny to think about that as an A because the A is on the bottom. could switch back and forth between this E and then this A maybe so I can be like and then I can put well that B is what I'm focused on Anyway, all right, let's leave it at that for now. For now. We will leave it at that for now. What if I choose another one of these? I'm just gonna pick randomly in the key of A minor. I listed out all of the notes, three combinations of three numbers. So I have three numbers up to seven, because seven, and then combinations of three numbers. So let's say I pick like uh, the one, the five, and the six. And then I try to say, okay, one, five, six, what does that do? So if I go over here and I'm like, all right, now I'm gonna play the one, 
the five, and the six. Okay. So what would that be if I'm playing in a minor mode? Well, the one is obviously a minor. It's a minor. And then the five, is that major or minor? Well, I could say, well, I know in the minor scale that the one, four, five are minor, and that's a five, so that's going to be minor. That's one way I could do it. And I could say, well, what about the six then? Well, if the one, four, five are minor, I know that the second is the one I avoid in the minor. That's the crazy Locrian. And therefore, the, the three, six, seven must be the majors. Therefore, if I just look at the triads, I know that I'd be playing from an A minor to a E minor to an F major. Which I'll just play this one. So I know that. So that's cool. But beyond that, then, how else can I figure that out? What about the, well, I could say, well, if I didn't know that, I could do my little math conversion that works on any mode by knowing that the Aeolian is mode number six, and six minus one is five, meaning it's five steps away from the first of the related major scale, plus another five, because I'm looking at position five. So five plus five is, is 10. There's only seven positions. So 10 minus seven is three, which would mean it's the relative third of the related major scale. And I memorized the major scale has a one, four, five major and the two, three, six minor. Therefore, it would be a minor. And then I could say, okay, what about the six? Well, we, it's on the Aeolian five, which is the sixth mode. Six minus one is five plus six would be 11. 11 minus the seven modes, seven, eight would be the fourth. So therefore, the fourth relative position to the major scale is, uh, I know a major because the one, four, five are major on the, re on the majors. Okay, great. What about the seven, what about, what kind of seven, nine, 11, and 13 can I play on those? Okay, so I could go, well, if I'm playing like an A, if I'm playing like an A minor, and then I'm going to the E minor, I could think of myself as being playing like E Aeolian, making it the Aeolian and looking at the same relative positions I have uh, for the minor. Or I can think of myself in the same key and say that not only is this the five is the third mode or the Phrygian mode, meaning it still has a minor third, but also has the the flat second, which we haven't talked about and we'll talk more about later, it has the distinctive, we're looking at the ninth right now, which is the equivalent of a major second. The Phrygian is the one that has a flat uh, ninth or a, a minor second, one note away minor second. So that's cool. So I could say, if I'm like, if I'm playing this A minor right here, and there's my A, I can't play this note, it's outside of the key, because that would be, I have to go up to this note, because that would be in the key, because it's it's a it's a it's a the second is a major second or a two note away major nine or major second, right? So I have to go. But if I'm playing the E minor equivalent here, E minor, this note is in the key. So if I was playing something that was like, like if I went to E Aeolian minor scale, one one three five. I can like noodle up to here and that would be an E Aeolian but it would not be in the equivalent mode of A minor so I could go like so that sounds cool because it's symmetrical but it's not in the same key if it was in the same key I can go and then on the on the Lydian now I have a, a major on the on the on the on the F, so it's an F major, and I won't get into too much on the, the Lydian. 
I can, I can play all the intervals related to the, I could think of myself as going to F major, right, where all the intervals would be relative to the major, or to stay in the same key, I would be, I, and to be safer, you want to be kind of in the same key because this isn't a minor, so it's not going to be completely parallel, but to be in the same, then I would want to go to the Lydian mode in here would be the general idea. Okay, so if I noodled around in that, A, minor, E minor, F major, back to A minor, A minor, F, or E, Phrygian, adding the distinct Phrygian note, F, Lydian, F major. 